Greetings! I got something pretty cool to show you today. This is a Magellan GPS 300 handheld GPS navigator made in 1999. I bought this at a thrift store, bought it for a dollar, and uh, interestingly it's a thrift store I've never been to before in another town and uh, I saw it sitting on a shelf and I asked the guy how much he wanted for it and he said well it's not for sale right now because I don't know if it works. And I said to him, I said, so it's just sitting there on the shelf? And he said, yeah, pretty much. And then he said, well, if you want to risk it, I'll give it to you for a dollar. And I'm like, okay. So, uh, yeah, I bought this for a dollar. As you can see, it's uh, suffered a fall or another impact of some sort in its life. But uh, otherwise, it is intact and in pretty good shape. So this is my very first Magellan. GPS. I've only ever owned Garmin units, so uh, I've been pretty interested to uh, try this out. I also got it with the manual. The uh, GPS 300 was introduced in 1997. It was a low-end unit. I'm not sure if it was the lowest-end uh, unit that Magellan offered, but it was certainly near that. And uh, it was also apparently sold under another name, the Magellan Pioneer, although I think GPS 300 is the more common uh, name. So let's take a look at it here. We have a quad helix antenna so as such it gets best signal when the GPS is oriented upwards rather than flat like a patch antenna. We have a black and white LCD display. Now here's how low end this thing is. This thing is so low end that its user interface and its feature set predate it by like 10 years. This feels the the way this works makes it feel like a GPS from like the late 1980s or early 90s. That's how primitive it really is. Uh, the display is not a dot matrix display. It is made up of hard indicators and graphical symbols and a couple of numeric lines to display information. That's really nuts. I think the only Garmin GPS is that ever uh, work that way were the earliest ones made in the early 1990s. This thing is from 1999. So uh, yeah, extremely primitive uh, for its time, which I think is really interesting. There's our buttons, directional pad, power menu, go to, enter, navigation, mark. Uh, this thing can store waypoints, up to 100 of them. Magellan doesn't call them waypoints, they call them uh, landmarks. And there is also a display backlight, an electroluminescent backlight. It works nicely. This thing does appear to work absolutely perfect. However, uh, there is one problem. It's e exceptionally poor at uh, getting uh, satellite reception. I literally had to leave this thing on all day. I've had it turned on. Before this video, I had this thing turned on for probably close to five or six hours. And it was just finally able to get three satellites which it needed to begin uh, uh, computing a position fix. But even after that, you know, if I ever moved it around or grabbed it and put it in my hand, uh, it would lose the tracking and it would go back to acquiring satellites. This thing has an exceptionally uh, poor receiver in it. I don't know if that was by design or if it's because it's old and perhaps the well, older GPS receivers have problems with uh, getting information from the GPS satellites today, although my Garmin E-Trex, or my uh, Garmin GPS 12CX, which is also from 1999, has no problem. Or maybe the, whatever damage this thing sustained, uh, has actually damaged the receiver or the antenna somehow, I don't know, but this thing is exceptionally poor at uh, receiving satellite information and I've turned it off for this video, so I'll probably never get it to uh, begin tracking again for this video, but we'll see. So, battery compartment's here. It's got this ring, which you unscrew. It takes two AA batteries, which uh, reportedly run it for 24 hours without the backlight. So there you go. Now get a load of this. Uh, if I take this battery out, by the way, the memory in this thing, where you store your landmarks and whatever, I'm not sure, but I guess it must be retained by a capacitor, uh, because the manual says that uh, this thing will retain your memory for 20 minutes without batteries in it. So I would assume that it has a capacitor in it. 
like Garmin's older GPS's used to do. But uh, take a look at this. If I take the batteries out here, look at that. Despite that the batteries face in opposite directions like you'd normally see, the, there's spring contacts on each on uh, one end. So for this battery, the positive terminal hits the spring contact. That's really, really dumb, I think. It kind of makes it awkward putting batteries in and out. That battery contact there was uh, had a bit of dried up acid, old acid on it. And this thing actually did not turn on when I first tried it, but it did work after sanding that terminal. Now hopefully, even though I only had the batteries out for under a minute, hopefully I didn't lose my memory. If I did, all bets are off for this thing uh, acquiring a satellite signal. Um, those two contacts there, I believe, are for an external power source. It was a proprietary adapter that screwed into that mount there and contacted there. Made in Taiwan, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's turn this on and get a look at how primitive this thing is. There's that alphanumeric part of the display. Oh, no, our memory was retained. There was the last coordinates it picked up. So this is what the display consists of. A couple of alphanumeric lines and a bunch of graphical symbols. This circle right here becomes a uh, very crude looking graphical compass uh, when you're actually tracking. There's this satellite status. Oh, okay, this thing just acquired... <laughs> there you go. Wow, I didn't think it'd do that well. It's acquired a fix already. Excellent. Uh, so now we're on the navigation screen. It'll give you your speed, uh, your distance from a landmark if you have it set to uh, go to a landmark, as well as your bearing and heading. And uh, there's your compass, and there it says tracking. If we, go, if we press nav to go back to the uh, satellite page, there's our coordinates, and this represents our satellites. So we're getting three satellites. I'll probably uh, lose one or two and it'll stop tracking. See it says tracking there and it says we've uh, acquired three satellites. So how this works is this arrow travels clockwise. These circles around the big circle, they represent the satellites. The hollow circles are satellites with which the GPS can see but cannot acquire position information from. The solid circles are satellites that the GPS can acquire position information from and you need three of them to get a position fix. It gives you the satellite elevation in degrees there. I don't know why that even really matters. And uh, oddly enough, it's not a documented feature, but if you press enter enough times, there, it, uh, it gives you all this technical satellite information. I think the number on the left there, see it's 12, 5, and 29. I think those are the actual satellite identification numbers. Turn on the backlight here, you probably can't see it. Yeah, I don't know. But you get a little light bulb symbol there. So I'll go into the menu here by pressing menu. And this is how the menu works. It just, uh, that means landmarks, LMKS. So you can view landmarks by press menu again. I can create a route out of land landmarks just like you can do on Garmin GPS's. There's the current time and date. There's our elevation above sea level. There's our battery meter. When the batteries are low, a graphical indicator shows up at the bottom left. And there's our setup menu. Press enter to change. So now we can set our co uh, coordinate system, which is set to the default at degrees and minutes. If I press right or up, it doesn't matter. There's our map datum, WGS84, still the standard. There's our units, miles and miles per hour. I can uh, press enter to change that. And it starts blinking. If I press right, there's kilometers, kilometers per hour. I'll keep it on there. Time uh, format, 12 or 24 hour. Our north reference, you can choose magnetic or true. Uh, you can press enter here to reinitialize the receiver. It forgets where it is and it'll just start the six hour initialization prog process all over again. Uh, there's a demo mode, doesn't do much. Just pretends it has satellites. And our display contrast, so if I bring that up all the way, you can see, you should be able to see all the indicators on the display there. See, it's there's no dot matrix anywhere, just graphical indicators. It's so weird, very extremely primitive. And I think that's kind of cool because I've never had a GPS like this. So I'll turn our contrast back down there. And we're back to coordinate system. So if we press nav, 
and well, we're still tracking got three satellites that's the most reliable this thing's been so far maybe it does work fine maybe it hasn't probably hasn't run in years and maybe after it's uh, got a bit of use it'll work a bit better although I do wish it would pick up more than three satellites it did have four at one point but sometimes I'll just you know set this on the ground or whatever and it'll lose all but one satellite if not all of them but yeah so incredibly primitive there's no map display like you'd get on a Garmin GPS uh, no uh, you know breadcrumb trail representing where you've traveled nothing uh, this this is a really good GPS if you actually want to learn how to properly navigate because all you have to work with is your coordinates and uh, you know your position relative to a waypoint and all that sort of stuff so I didn't put my shoes on but I will do that and uh, we'll start walking with this thing I have not actually moved with this thing yet to see if it actually properly displays my translation so uh, I will do that well, when I put this thing down to put my shoes on, it lost a satellite and quit tracking, but we got it back. So, uh, oh, I've had this thing zoomed up. That's why I haven't been getting a good wide angle. Uh, okay, let's go to the navigation page and start walking. See if it picks up our speed. I don't know how quick, oh yeah, there's our speed and there's our heading and there's an arrow. That big arrow shows our direction relative to north. I wonder if that could be set to uh, do it the other way around so it displays where north is relative to you. Uh, there we go. Ah, we're picking up four satellites now. So this thing is working. Takes an awful while to pick up your movement, kind of like the Garmin GPS 12CX, except the 12CX is a bit better than this. <laughs> This thing's not doing a very good job. It did pick up my speed before, but now it's not at all. Or maybe it's just not very accurate at all. Oh, there we go. So what I can do is I can uh, make a waypoint by pressing mark. And there it shows the coordinates and we can name it and enter. We can edit the coordinates if we want. And there, we've made a waypoint called home. Now if I press go to, we can go to home. There's the, our distance from home and the, our bearing, I guess relative to the direction we were last walking in. And if I press enter, there, now it says we're going home, our distance from home, and so forth. How many, uh, it says we're only tracked, huh, it did say one satellite and tracking but you, it needs three satellites to track, so I'm not sure what it was doing there. Yeah, this thing has a really weak receiver. Very weak. Weak and not very accurate. Or perhaps I should say not very precise, perhaps that's the more... That's the more accurate term, pardon the pun. When you're moving towards a waypoint, it gives you the direction you should turn to be in, heading in the direction of the waypoint. It also tells you uh, where north is relative to uh, your current direction as well. But there's all that information. Uh, I can't get this thing to uh, actually display my movement uh, very well. Once in a while I can. Yeah, I just sit this thing on the ground and uh, it loses its tracking. Although it seems to be getting it back rather quickly now. Very weak receiver. This thing just sits on the edge of getting a adequate reception but uh, it's working a lot better than it was earlier today when I set it outside for hours and hours for it to get a signal and again this thing is so primitive that you actually can't cancel a go-to to cancel a go-to you have to turn it off and turn it back on I was looking at the uh, manual I found specifications in the back and not only is it actually a 12 channel receiver which I wouldn't have expected I would have expected an 8 channel at the very most but it apparently actually updates once uh, once every second which is impressive but uh yeah that's literally pretty much all there is to show of the Magellan GPS 300 handheld GPS navigator from 1999 
extremely basic and primitive GPS receiver. No dot matrix display, no computer connectivity, uh, <laughs> no map display, nothing of the sort. Uh, this will certainly get you from point A to point B and you might actually learn how to use a map or a compass or something along the way. But uh, if I can get this thing to uh, work a bit more reliably, then I might actually use it. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.